Okay, guys, uh, I'm gonna go through a quick little video. Maybe not quick, but um, just gonna do a little update on my my <coughs> my real steel uh, gun collection, and um, got some new additions or a new addition, I should say. Um, I got some you know various ammo I've run through these guns. Um, actually, this one I have not shot yet, but um, and this is definitely not all the different types of brands. You know, Winchester White Box, uh, Hornady. Uh, what is it? American Gunner, uh, DRT, Hollow Points. Um, I, I've shot numerous different um, rounds through the, the 380 uh, because I wanted to make sure it would run with lots of different uh, brands so I could trust it because this is my my gun that I use for um, self defense, you know, whatnot. This is a um, a Glock 23, which is a 40 caliber pistol, and uh, this is the Gen 4. We'll go over all this stuff and my plans with it, and some stuff I have for it, and some stuff I got with it. Um, pretty good deal here. Uh, this is a conversion kit. Um, I'm going to be using it for the red dot. I'm not going to be filming this on uh, because I want some. Some might give me shit because there's a stock and. What not? So, I'm not using it with the stock. I'm just using it for the red dot. But um, yeah, so I won't be making videos of that because it gets too much flack. There's a little 22 pistol. My dad actually got this for me. Um, this is a model after the Bobcat. It actually just stopped working again. Um, so far, all that's been done with it um, is the firing pin has been replaced. But as you can see, the the slide is cracked right there um, and now it needs a new, another new firing pin so it's just having constant issues and it's a hundred and something odd dollar gun so brand new so I'm, I'm gonna probably just use this as a wall hanger um, but it served me well and it's been a fun gun and I'm put that on there um, excuse my hand Oops. But I'll leave that up just so you guys can know that it's safe or whatever. And this is my Hatson uh, Escort Magnum. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm kind of like stepped up. Just got over like a cold or whatever. Um, this is a semi-automatic shotgun in case you haven't seen it. Um, look in there. So, um, this thing's badass. Um, I, I have been having problems with light primer strikes. I don't know if it's something I'm doing. But it didn't have the problem when I first got it. Uh, it's, it's only had about maybe four or five hundred rounds through it, so I don't imagine something's broken. <coughs> but uh, I've run I've run numerous different things. Um, this is some I've you know run uh, birdshot, uh, light you know heavy heavy load or whatever. This is steel shot. Um, this is some extra light stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna test out next time I go shooting uh, to see if it cycles in the gun. I doubt it'll cycle in the gun, but if it does, that'd be cool. Um, then my girlfriend can shoot it more comfortably. Uh, some Remington slugs, sluggers or whatever, and some Winchester slugs. Uh, these are some Winchester, like, sort of segmented defense slugs, and if you look at them, actually there's a couple on this top here. So get it. And um, they're pre-segmented. You can see that. Focus. There you go. So upon impact, they segment into three little sections. I think the core stays the same, but um, those are pretty cool. Um, keep those in there. And uh, some Federal slugs or whatever. So I've run all those things successfully through it. Uh, also run some Suprema or Suprema. I'm assuming it's Suprema. Double up buck and bird shot through it as well. And uh, a couple other different uh, rounds, but yeah, it's been it's been a pretty solid performer. I think I I'll give you an update on it if I fix the issue or not. Um, I, I'm pretty sure just the trigger uh, the trigger group was just super dirty. Um, I took the entire gun apart and cleaned every little bit of it. Also beveled off the I don't know if you can tell. I right, this thing focus, um, but I, I filed down the. The edges here, because they're really sharp. So when you put in new shells, um, it would almost cut your fingers. If you know, especially if you weren't 
he weren't wearing gloves. So anyway, let's go over some stuff here. Um, I've been getting a lot of tool ammo, ammo, tula, tula ammo, tool ammo, um, for a specific reason for this particular gun. One because it's cheap, but uh, I mean it's the same price as this, pretty much. Perfect. Oh, this is nine millimeter, but um, actually we'll get into that in a second. Um, I got, you know, I, I run Perfecta through this, this gun as well. Um, actually, we'll just throw it up there. Um, so yeah, this is this is the same price as this, pretty much. I think it's like a couple pennies difference. Uh, this this is uh, premier premium stuff. This stuff is pretty much the same price, and this stuff is about twenty bucks a box. Um, it's all right. I mean, I don't think it's worth the extra five bucks. But uh, this stuff I got from Cabela's. And this is not Hornady Critical Defense, and this is actually um, the HPA, but I keep it in this little box because it's kind of a nice little box to carry some extra rounds in your case. But anyway, so I've been getting tool ammo a lot, and for those of you that don't know, we'll go over some different little things here, some comparisons between the ammo. But for those of you who don't know, it's steel cased, and again, my phone came. And uh, it's, it's not like. It's not horrible ammo, but it's the worst ammo I've ever run through this gun, and that's why actually I get it. I get a lot of this stuff um, to induce malfunctions intentionally. That's why I like it. And it makes makes it to where I I personally have to clear um, you know failure to feeds or whatever failure to ejects or whatever whatever it ha it's it's uh, going on with it. Uh, but this is really the only ammo that does this to this gun. And I've also per picked some up for the 40 Smith and Wesson um, to see if it has any similar effects. I, I don't think it will. It's a much more powerful round, and um, I think it'll you know, throw it out of there and then load itself because it's a lot more mass. Uh, but I mean, look at that. This is a pretty big round there compared to the. Well, this is a snap cap, but compared to the 380. But. Um, yeah, so that's my whole theory behind this, is I'm picking up this stuff for, for training purposes. And then I get this stuff. This stuff is actually only sold at Walmart, and I really like it. It's got a really nice finish to it. Um, I'll show you it. It's kind of like an all brass. It's really, really nicely finished. And it's, it's uh, distributed by, actually, this, this same company. But it's made by, what is it, how it's, I don't know how it's pronounced, Fioshi, uh, Fioshi? Uh, where's that? Let's see, distributed, where is it? Distributed by Tall Ammo USA. And then it says something about, where is it? Oh, it says something about Fioshi, or, or it's, it's made by them, or something like that. So it's made by... I don't know how to pronounce it, but Fioshi, and then I'm going to say it three more times, probably. So I'm just going to give up. You know what I'm saying. This stuff is, is, is pretty good. I also find it's in Walmart. It's reliable. I haven't had any problems with it. It's a little bit lighter. It's 94 grain. This is 95. Uh, this stuff's like 100, I think 100 grain. This is good stuff. I, I like this. Uh, more expensive. Um, the Federal, eh, whatever. I don't think it's worth extra money, and this is like 16 bucks. So. Um, I don't run hollow points in the 380 because you know the whole debate behind the the penetration test of the um, the hard ball ammunition and the uh, hollow points, and the hollow points not providing enough penetration. So I, I use the uh, the round nosed uh, ball ammunition, and. Um, as you can see from the side there, this is unloaded. And um, I, put, I guess I'll put this camera right here. And see? Nothing in there. Um, this is called the clip draw. And it attaches by way of a, a new back plate. And the back plate is made out of steel. As you can see, it just cleaned and lubricated the gun. Um, but 
The thing, uh, it doesn't look bad on the gun. It doesn't like interfere with your, your sight picture. Um, I kind of have it mounts a little bit crooked, but that doesn't matter. Uh, but what happens is that you just clip it to the inside of your pocket or um, your inside the waistband there. And let's see if I can demonstrate. And look at my underwear. But like that. And then it's right there. You just pop it out, you know do your thing but uh, it's, it's pretty convenient and makes it to where you don't have to have a holster that's my Glock 3, uh, 380 which is a the Glock 42 model this is the, the among the first uh, made it's when they first came out and I've had almost no issues with this except for with the, the steel case ammo which is what I recommend is running steel case ammo through your gun just to see if, uh, if it'll run it if it runs it and then great you know it's just one of those extra security things like saying like, oh, well, my gun will run anything I, run, I, I put through it. And it does run in the gun, but I definitely would not carry it. So, um, and, yeah, these are snap caps. And for those of you not familiar with them, um, these are like just aluminum fake uh, bullets. And they have a little plastic little thing to absorb the, the shock of the, um, whatchamacallit, it's just to practice like drawing, uh, loading the first round, ejecting round, uh, clearing failures. You know, it's just to, to practice without live ammunition, basically. So um, it, I'm eventually going to get some for the Glock 23 as well. But um, it's a great gun, and I, I love this thing, and I will keep that forever. This is uh, my newest purchase, and I got it for way dirt cheap. This is a Gen 4 Glock 23. Um, I got it for $400 with four magazines. These are each uh, 13 round magazines. Um, I only load 12 in them because the last round is it's pretty tough to get in there. Not, and I don't like the idea of the spring being like all the way compressed. Um, it came with four, four magazines, two holsters. This one uh, I already had. Um, I'll show you this in a second. But the two holsters, uh, the case. The cleaning thingy, which you know comes with the Glocks, whatever, didn't come with the ammunition. Uh, the speed loader, it came with Trigicon uh, night sights, which I believe are like a hundred, hundred fifty dollars by themselves. And just to show you, let's put this down again. Um, uh, the gun is empty. Um, yeah, like this gun has almost no wear on it. And it looks tan in, in, in this, but it's actually sort of a greenish color. I mean, look how brand new that is. 400 bucks. Um, you know, from, from what I know about these guns, like, you can get them used, like the Gen 3s, for like, uh, you know, 475, 500, something like that. But um, the new ones, you're looking at like 600, you know, with all this stuff, it'd be like close to $800. Um, I think if my calculations are right, I could be wrong, but. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but 400 bucks for all this is a, a fucking steal. And uh, it also came with the original Glock sights too. The guy included those, and then he also included. Um, I think I, did I mention this? The, the speed loader. I think he included something else too, but I can't remember what it was. But it's pretty cool of him to include like this little uh, you know hard case. Or I like I like this Black Hawk talk uh, Serpa better and. And they include this little leather one, which is kind of nice if you're like a cowboy or something. But uh, this is actually, uh, it's actually clicks on there if you're not familiar with these. And it makes it to where someone can't grab this from you unless they push that button right there. And this button, when you uh, release the, the, the holster, your finger's already in the right position. Like, so when you, when you draw it, your finger's not on the trigger. You know, and you, and you can easily transition from there, so like you don't make the mistake of. Um, these are actually night sights, by the way. I'm gonna turn the lights off for a second. Uh, of course, my fucking flash is on. I, I can't demonstrate the night sights, but believe me that they they do work and they're very bright, um, very easy to see at night, and that's pretty cool. Uh, I need to adjust them a little bit because the back sight's kind of loose. So I think these are set screws in, in there, but uh, I'll, I'll figure it out later. But so, so that's that.
I'm very excited about this. And yeah, I got some Telamo, and it's, it's steel cased. And then I've got some Perfecta for, and, and oddly enough, Perfecta for the the 40 Smith and Wesson is not all brass like the 380, like the nine mm uh, So I, I've also got something pretty exciting for this. And um, if you don't already know, like if you get the 23, because it's a larger bore than nine mm you can get conversion barrels um, that make up for the extra space and then allow you to shoot nine millimeter and uh, what is it 357 sig so 357 sig is is the same size diameter um, in terms of the back portion so all you need is a barrel change and, and the magazines will feed the uh, 357 um, I think there have been some reports of it kind of having some issues but um, you can do it like you can actually um, people use these for the 9 millimeter even though it's not recommended it will work as long as uh, you're not worried about like um, having to be super consistent and you know no failures or whatever you can actually use these mags and it, it'll run it'll just kind of run kind of crappy but that's exciting and um, I'll make sure and show you guys how that how that works once I get it in um, as for the shotgun um, I will update you after tomorrow and uh, let you let you know if, if the issue's been resolved. Um, it's pretty concerning because uh, the front sight wobbled off and I haven't Loctited it back on yet. So uh, this pin fell out and then the little screw kind of loosened itself and it just kind of lifted off. So you know, it's got a lot of recoil. So um, I don't blame it for doing that. And I didn't Loctite a lot of stuff on the gun yet. So, but this is a very high quality gun if I can confirm that it is not having an issue. So I will definitely let you know. Um, I've been checking out the Mossbergs and Remingtons or whatever, like uh, which this gun is competing with. And this gun, in terms of fit and finish and how you know tight everything is on it, and you know it's got a chrome line barrel. Uh, the parts are pretty high quality um, so far, <laughs> and it's got a um, five in the tube of two and three quarter shells, and it's also um, chambered for three inch shells, uh, magnum loads or whatever. Uh, but I haven't run any through it yet uh, because I don't really spend a lot of money on the shotgun rounds. I kind of just stick with Walmart rounds. And uh, a lot of these things are from Walmart. These are not from Walmart. But a lot of the ammo is from Walmart. And, um, I like to keep it that way as long as Walmart's got cheap ammo. Um, I figure if my guns won't run the cheap ammo, then I don't want the guns. So, <coughs> so anyway... Um, I wanted to just update you guys on, on some of my new purchases and some exciting stuff. Uh, this I'm really excited about and um, hopefully I'll give you an update on this and let you know how it goes, especially with the conversion kit. Um, as you know, the, what is it, the breech face, I, don't, uh, I can't really show you, but the face is larger than on a 9mm and then also the extractor has a little bit more wiggle room in terms of uh, you know catching, catching the rim of a 9mm. Um, just to show you what's going on here, um, to show you the difference in size in the nine millimeter, and I guess I'll show you, show you it in comparison to a 380 as well. I'll uh, we'll grab one of these. This is actually perfect. Uh, let's show you progression here. That's what you're looking at there. And I don't know why it's not focusing. There you go. This is the 380. Right here, the nine millimeter. And this is the 40 Smith and Wesson. This this is all all Perfecta, all same brand. As you can tell, the Perfecta um, for the nine millimeter and the 380, it's got a sort of a brass coating on the <coughs> the projectile itself. Which is kind of cool, and I really like that for the fit and finish. I'm not sure why they went with the sort of copper jacketed um, on the 40 for whatever reason. Anyway, um, so here's the difference in size here. If you look at that, the 380 is pretty similar, if not almost the same as the 9mm, but um, there's a considerable difference from the 9mm to the 40 Smith & Wesson. So, um, 
so I, I do have some concerns about the. Um, I will open this up here. Put you in your little, your little spot in your little corner. Um, I would be doing this in my shop, but my shop's kind of a mess right now. But if you look right here, that little face. Let's see if I can connect it. Now the nine millimeter will connect to the, or the extractor will pick it up and remove it from the gun. Okay, well this is not going to work one-handed. But anyway, um, so basically just the face right there is, okay, it's kind of questionable uh, as to whether it's going to reliably, see how, how much room there is to wiggle around and then this one obviously nowhere near as much because it's intended for this. But yeah. Here's something funny though. Just <laughs> load this uh this nine milli in my forty cal. I'll I'll load it in by by hand here. If I could fucking Okay, ready? And there it goes. <laughs> it's kinda funny how how much bigger of a chamber that is. But anyway, um, so these are my babies. Hopefully, uh, I don't know, maybe I, I learned, uh, taught you something. And hopefully, I will update you soon on these guns and let you know what's going on. But I'm very happy with, uh, especially this purchase. Give me a thumbs up just for finding a crazy awesome deal. 400 bucks seems like brand new. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and subscribe, and give me a thumbs up, hopefully you like this, and uh, for you airsofters out there, I apologize for not making many airsoft videos, um, I have been airsofting still, but um, I haven't really got any new gear or anything to review uh, recently, so I will be, there is some something that's on my horizon, um, the PTS PDRD. And I'm really um, looking forward to that. I don't know when it's coming out. There's been no announcements as to when it's coming out exactly. But um, but I just wanted to update you on my, my Real Steel stuff since uh, I'm able to, to get a hold of them now. So, hope you enjoyed.